Today we're going to be showing you how to make Internet of Things projects with a Wi-Fi board in the Arduino dev environment. We'll be using a NodeMCU ESP8266 development board to control output and read sensor input over Wi-Fi. For this project you'll need a NodeMCU ESP8266 development board, a micro USB cord, an LED, a 10K resistor, some jumper wires, a photo resistor, and a breadboard. As always, links to all the parts needed for this video are in the description. First, plug in the Node MCU to your computer. From the Arduino IDE, install the board by going to File, then Preferences. Type in the shown URL in Additional Boards Manager's URL's text box, shown here. Next, go to Tools, then the Board Menu option, and click Boards Manager. From here, Scroll down to the ESP8266 by the ESP8266 Community Board. Click Install. Mine has already been installed, so it shows as installed here. From here you may need to restart the Arduino IDE, so just close it and relaunch it if you are having trouble with the next steps. Next, we need to select the board. Go to Tools, Board, and select Node MCU 1.0 ESP-12E module from the menu. Next. We need to select the port. Go to Tools, Port, then select the available COM port. Mine is COM port 3, but yours may be different. Finally, we need to change the serial monitor baud rate. This will let us send messages from the Node MCU back to our computer. Go to Tools, Serial Monitor, and a window should pop up. You need to change the drop down that says 9600 baud to 115200 baud. This is because the Node MCU chip uses a faster serial communications protocol than the Arduino does by default. If you get gibberish in your serial monitor or it doesn't work at all, this drop down menu not being changed is probably the culprit. At this stage, we're ready to check if everything's working. Go to File, Examples, ESP8266, and Blink. If you don't see the ESP8266 and a bunch of other related examples as shown here, it's probably because you need to select the board first. If the Node MCU 1.0 board isn't selected under Tools Board, the Arduino IDE won't show you these examples, which is a little confusing. Now click Compile and Upload and just wait. After a few seconds of compiling, you should see the red LED on the board turn on and off if everything is working correctly. Next up, we're going to control an LED over Wi-Fi. This part of the tutorial was inspired by the Instructables article titled Quick Start to Node MCU ESP8266 on Arduino IDE. Link in the description. Copy the code from the article and paste it into a new project in the Arduino IDE. From here you'll need to enter the information for your home Wi-Fi network. The SSID is the name of your network as it appears when you connect from it from your laptop or phone. And then the password is the password that you use to connect. Now hook up the LED. Put the Node MCU into a breadboard. Connect the GND pin to the rail. Connect the LED's cathode, that's the short pin, to the ground rail. Connect the jumper cable from the LED's anode, that's the long one, to D7 on the Node MCU. Note that the Node MCU has kind of weird pin mappings, so in the code you might notice we're using pin 13, not 7. But it should still work. That's all that should be required, you should be ready to go, but let's look at the code first. As you can see in the setup function, we're establishing a Wi-Fi connection with some boilerplate code. Then we print the Node MCU's IP address to the serial monitor. We'll use that later to connect directly to the Node MCU. In the loop code, we see some boilerplate code that looks for a connection. Then the URL is parsed, and the LED is either turned on or turned off depending on the URL. Next there's a bunch of print statements that print out the HTML and send it back to the browser. This includes HTML for buttons that generate the URLs that cause the LED to turn on and off. Now let's run it. Click Compile and Run.
go to the serial monitor window and wait for compilation to finish and the program to start. You should see an IP address get generated. That means the node MCU is ready and waiting for a connection. Copy the IP address and paste it into your favorite browser. This screen should pop up with a button to turn on the LED and turn it off. Click the on button and the LED should come on, completely controlled over Wi-Fi. That's pretty cool. You can turn it on and off from your computer or your phone or anything with a browser completely over the air, just as long as it's connected to your Wi-Fi network. Now let's do another common Internet of Things task. Read sensor input over Wi-Fi. The ESP8266 has one analog input pin, which will hook up to a photo cell to get ambient light information. Since the photocell is really just a resistor that changes its resistance value based on how much light is hitting it, we'll hook it up to the board's 3 volt VDD pin, then to the analog input pin A0. Add in the 10K resistor to ground and we're all set. For more about this circuit, see the photocell link in the description. You'll see we've modified the code a bit. Since we're doing a simple HTTP client server, the value of the photo cell sensor will only update when a button is pressed and a request to go fetch the value over Wi-Fi is sent. We need to add an LED state variable to keep track of whether the LED is on or off in between requests. We've also changed the structure a bit. Technically, we should probably be doing post requests to make this REST compliant, since we are changing the state of the LED, However, we're just going to use query parameters in the URL to send commands to the node MCU. As you can see, the code reads which command is sent and determines whether or not the LED should be lit up, and it reads the sensor. Finally, we've modified the HTML output to include a button for just reading the sensor and not changing the LED, and some code to display the sensor's value, which is from 0 to 1024, 0 being dark and 1024 being the maximum brightness. The code for this is linked in the description. Now upload to the board. Copy-paste the IP address from the serial monitor to your browser. And there's the light value. Covering the sensor and clicking check for new photo cell value should give you a smaller number. And moving it to light should give you a larger one. Now you know the basics of making Internet of Things projects. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, and subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorial videos like this one. That's all for now, I'm CJ Windish, and this has been Tinker and Build.